So let's uh, move on then. What we're going to do is we're actually, in moving on, we're actually going to move back. So let's see here. Uh, Philippi, how's your uh, microphone now? I hope it's good. Okay, I can I can hear you now. Oh. Okay, perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, you know, I've, I've had that kind of thing happen to me before, and uh, it's always one of those things where it's like, oh, man, but we everyone understands it's, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the way the things work nowadays, so. But. Uh-oh, I, I, I've, I've actually lost your audio again. I, I can hear you, I, I, I could hear you a moment ago, and now it just went out. No, I just, I just muted myself. Oh, you muted. Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so here I will, uh, now that we, we've kind of done a mic check, um, uh, I guess I'll remind everyone that you, you are the uh, Senior Embedded Software Engineer at Espressive System, and uh, you are uh, involved in open the open source group. You've worked with embedded systems now for over 15 yeah. years in areas such as robotics, IoT, defense, and uh, automotive. So uh, you're going to be giving a talk here for us on uh, controlling BLDC motors using vector FOC control on uh, RT thread. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. So I'm going to mute my mic and be quiet and uh, sit back and listen. So uh, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Just a moment while I set up my presentation. Uh, so let's get started again. So thank you, Aldo. Uh, thanks again for our to try to communicate uh, uh, organization team for inviting me to 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 this to this conference. So I will be presenting uh, how to control a BLDC motor using the classical vector FOC or field oriented control on RT thread. Uh, the idea here is to uh, look it into the art thread for uh, how, how it will be performed by doing some real world, real time task like uh, controlling a BLDC motor. Uh, I will be presenting this first uh, by showing you uh, what is the uh, basics of uh, BLDC motor and I'm um, planning to talk a bit of a very uh, introductory of the FOC algorithm in voltage mode and uh, present a bit of the artery thread uh, because the my main intention of this presentation is to go through the code. So I'm planning to share my uh, environment here and show you how to, what was the, the steps uh, I did to get in a BLDC motor uh, to spinning on the artery thread. So let's get started by first uh, talking about BLDC motors. As many of you already know, the, we have the brushed uh, DC motors, which moves uh, uh, using brushes uh, attached to its to it shaft. And uh, the commutation is very simple because it's, uh, it's handled mechanically. You don't need to do anything on this, uh, on this perspective to getting the, motors, the motor running. But when you enter in the BLDC motors uh, to get its uh, main benefits of uh, zero maintenance and high torque and uh, lower, uh, lower noise, you need to spend some time understanding how to, com to correctly perform the commutation of a BLDC motor. Because uh, you do not have, you don't have, again, you, you don't have uh, any more the the mechanical brushes to perform the, the, the commutation of the widings of the motor. You need to do this uh, by software or uh, electronically, like most uh, of the integrated circuits that that has uh, an engine control uh, built in. So to perform the commutation, you need, uh, you need to first read the rotor position, which could be a house sensor, an encoder sensor, but focusing on the BLDC motors uh, sequence commutation, once you get uh, well, where is the shaft, uh, where is the shaft is, you should perform a sequence of widings by exciting uh, phase A or phase B and not the phase C and so on in order to perform a rotational movement. And when you 
and uh, as long you uh, perform the connotation of the, this phase, you can control the torque of the motors and consequently uh, its velocity by modulating uh, the commutation signal. For example, using a pulse wide modulation, uh, which uh, we could perform uh, the current control. The problems with that approach is that you need the, sh the house sensor uh, or uh, back at AMF sensor attached to the to the each phase windings and measure the the back EMF in order to estimate the position of the of the of the motor. Uh, the second thing is the, the the resulting waveform, which the trapezoidal or modified squared uh, waveform code represents some kind of uh, of losses on your motors represented by heat losses uh, noise and vibration of the motor itself and you you cannot get the most uh, of the torque density of uh, of your motor so to overcome that uh, several ways to do the control of BLDC or permanent magnet synchronous motors the PM SM motors. Uh, one thing is to perform the control using pure sine waves uh, in order to get the the, the better the, the, the better uh, of the motor itself and uh, supplemented by the field oriented control. The idea behind of it is to oops. Uh, I love this effect on the PowerPoint. Is to uh, uh, command the BLDC motors or the PMSM motors using a special kind of modulation, which could be a side modulation or a space vector modulation, in order to generate a proper uh, waveforms on the motor windings and uh, uh, make sure that the resulting torque is, is the torque that you actually need. Uh, talking about the specific modulation itself, the initial gains that you that you that you receive for doing this kind of, of algorithm is to remove the, the needs of a specific commutation because all the, the all the phase of the motor will be will be commuted but uh, it will be commuted in a way that will be represented as a sine wave and not uh, a pure, uh, okay, it's if the rotor position is in that position, so it's time to uh, perform the commutation of the selected phase. The rotor position in this, in, in this in case of the, of the FOC control is used for another purpose, which is to estimate uh the the magnet flux of the uh of the stator of the motor and base it on on the flux magnet uh, flux magnet components you can project that into two static vectors uh called the i key and id components and based on that on that vectors and the angle between between it you can perform a more preci precise control of the torque of the of the final torque on the shaft motor. So when you have uh, both IT and ID displaced by 90 degree, you will uh, outcome your shaft will outcome with the maximum torque allowed by your motor. Of course, depending on the on the on the specification. So the field oriented control uses this uh, heuristic to move the motor. Um, the, the algorithm itself uh, is uh, it's covered by a lot of myths of its complexity and, uh, uh, and the requirements to have a PhD in electrical engineering to understand all the, uh, all the algorithm, which, which is true in when you need to understand what's the bits involved with the, the, this kind of algorithm. So, so but when you Sticks to sticks with the the voltage the voltage move mode uh, FOC algorithm. Uh, the things tends to be a, uh, to be a a bit simple because most of the processing of the of the FOC control uh, is most a softer thing. So you have 
uh, you have little, almost not uh, dependence on the hardware because you need you need of uh, position se position sensor of the motor. You need a six a transistor uh, eight bridge commanded by a complementary PWM or a three phase PWM. So this is the hardware you need actually to perform the the the, the FOC control. So once you have this information provided by your operating system as the RT thread could provide easily by its uh, device framework the algorithm itself uh, you can focus on the algorithm itself by writing the logic behind of the FOC control so take taking the RT thread I think most of you already already saw this uh, figure of the of the RT thread uh, simplified architecture. So it's one of my favorite favorite uh, favorite uh, figures about of its architecture. It also was uh, called my attention years ago when I started to use uh, as a personal project and more lately in professional projects. Uh, the parts of interest that Architrat offers is uh, the real time priority based multiscarion, which allows to create a real time process. For example. The FOC loop needs to run periodically with, a, with some strict time uh, requirements. For example, if you use the current mode control of the FOC controller, you probably will need some kind of PID controllers which need a uh, fixed timestamp to perform the integration and the derivation, derivative actions to perform the current control on the, on the model shaft. So this is the first advantage that uh, Architrad could offer by 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 being a real-time operating system, but not itself. Uh, Architrad also uh, uh, presents to you like a more complex operating system because it's also offered to you uh, a device driver model, which which transforms the experience to port uh, FOC algorithm from um, from one platform to another, a painless task because you just need to understand how to uh, open a driver and how to perform the control of that driver and then plug it, plugs it into your uh, FOC application. For our for, for the sample that I'm intending to show you, uh, you will see that the RT thread is uh, very loosely coupled to the uh, FOC application. I just need to create some proper sensor interface in order to interact with the kernel and read, and read the, the underlying hardware registers. Uh, another things, another thing that I like of, about Architrad to do some kind of this, of this task of FOC control, is the component component Z development module, which allows me to uh, make the final application uh, outside of the source tree. For example, uh, I provided the the link on my GitHub of this uh, FOC application, so uh, it's out of out of source project. That you can just point where you, uh, where are where is your Arch thread installation stance, and uh, then you are ready to go. So you don't need to perform any kind of uh, complex uh, porting action uh, in your in your in your development environment. So putting all together, I come to you with this uh, initial very simplified model of the application. The, as I said to you, um, the, the FOC just depends the board BSP because uh, Architrad offers both the device drivers but also offers the board BSP which which maps to you uh, the, the drivers that supported for a particular uh, board. And from that BSP I can reach out to the I, I squared C encoder driver, for example, or a PWM driver, or a simulated uh, rotor sensor driver. And the, the FOC top level application uses the top level uh, main uh, entry point from, from the Architrad kernel and uses its primitives uh, of timing to just feed the FOC application, uh, the FOC application process. Mm. Uh, Talking about the algorithm itself, 
besides the motor control hardware and the drivers uh, you are seeing here, uh, the, the, the voltage mode FOC algorithm, it's very simple in its sense. You need to perform uh, the actions to take, to take the, rotor, the rotor sensor and the desired phase voltage. The desired phase voltage could be, can be, a, could be a equivalent of the, the, the voltage that you are applying a brushed DC motor. But instead of just applying this voltage directly to the motor, uh, you need to project that, uh, that, 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 that static voltage into a three-phase vector. So for, that, for, to do that, for doing that correctly, you need to uh, estimate the, the, the rotor position. And uh, the phase vector is at two components, the VQ and VD. Uh, in order to perform the, the rotation with the maximum torque, we typically make VD uh, voltage to zero volts and the VQ uh, equal to the voltage that you might to apply to control the motor. Uh, once this information is fed to the FOC core, uh, the, the power of inverse Clark and inverse Clark transformer uh, we'll do some kind of, uh, of math. Uh, the inverse Clark transformer will uh, transform the VD and VT pair into a rotating uh, two-phase uh, vectors, which feeds the inverse Clark transformer that will project that vectors into a three-phase uh, components. Uh, this two, these two three-phase components are in essentially uh, duty cycles that you apply to the PWM inverter driver. So you just need to scale it down to the range of duty cycle and pass that information for your PWM driver. Uh, when I was building the, the, the demo, I actually burned the, my encoder by uh, tying to a, to a 12 volts uh, power supply. But I created a simulated rotor sensor, which allows me to demonstrate uh, the, the, the motor that I have on my bench running correctly. Uh, in the, I also uh, said before to you, but I uh, left the link for the FOC Arch thread sample. And here you can find the instructions to, to drop this uh, the sample inside of your proper Arch thread installation. It could be uh, installed by the Architrad Studio or Architrad uh, on the command line interface. So I think uh, uh, we can move to the code itself and see how this thing uh, actually works. So I will get. Oops. So do you see it now? Yep, now I can see it. OK, so thank you. Uh, so here I have uh, the font size. It's OK to, it's okay to you? Yep, looks good. OK, so here I have all the, I have you will start up your Architrad environment. Uh, forget the other folders. I just use. I'm taking the. Uh, I'm using a personal FOC project that I wrote for for this presentation. And the VS Code folder. I just set up my JLink in order to get some kind of debugging. Uh, but the part that of interest here is the Architrad itself. So I just cloned the Architrad from the from the GitHub itself and just drop it on my Linux installation. And uh, I selected my, uh, the hardware that I selected, it's a NRF5 board because it's one of the boards that had uh, very good support on the, on the Architrad device framework, including the three-phase PWM output. And uh, after that, I just take one of the templates and just drop it, the, my application, uh, here inside of the uh, of the one of the boards that uh, that I created from the templates, which this is the one of the things that that I that I love on the Architrad 
because the SCON script allows you to create uh, very powerful uh, uh, building rules for, uh, for 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 your project. In the in the board templates uh, itself, one of the mo one of one of the things that I, that I like here is uh, it's just it scans the all the all the directories that I had in, the, in my workspace and then find some kind of as uh, script inside of that folder and add it to the build. So this me allows to create a very simple repository with just my source the source files of the FOC. Uh, the Archithread entry point, which is a very regular Archithread entry point where you include the Archithread kernel API, the device framework, and then start to develop your application. So uh, I will enter in details uh, late, but uh, before to before to dive into the Archithread, uh, once I get uh, the Archithread in place and all my source files and my SCON script in place. Uh, that was uh, one thing that surprised me on Archithread when I start when I used it, and which um, it did not encourage me to uh, use the Archithread Studio, for example, because on the CLE for just building the the Archithread and configure the Archithread in your machine, you just need to do something like that. Once you start the menu config, uh, the, 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 the Archithread will present to you the menu config where you can do the basic kernel configuration. In my case, I need to uh, go to, go to on-ship peripherals and I need to enable the, the PWM. And depending on the configuration, since Archithread works with the same concept of bottom half uh, drivers and upper half drivers like other operating systems like Nutix do, you need also to enable the, the proper upper half device in order to get it uh, available for your application. So in this case, the GPIO, HC, and the Nordic BSP uh, by default enable the PWM upper half drivers when you select the lower half drivers. So. Once you go with the Archithread uh, configuration, that was the most interesting part. In my case, uh, this step was skipped, but it will download the AMP tool, which allows to you to download the online package for Archithread by just sourcing the AMP, the, uh, the AMP environment and by doing package, oops, packages update, which I'm, um, of course, will not do this for now because I have all the, the components I have. And it will bring the components that are not present in your installation, and then you are ready to go by just doing the ask cons. Once you do that, you have the Archithread L file to perform the debugging, and you have on your project root the bin and x file to perform the actual flashing on your device. So things I had to do uh, in this in order to get this thing uh, working. For some reason, the Nordic drivers are not was not were not uh, calculating correctly the duty cycle based on nanoseconds. So since the the RT, the RT PWM set is one of the of the driver functions that you need to use to pass the, the duty cycle in nanoseconds. But the the value itself was not is was not representing the reality when I measured with my oscilloscope. So this uh, turned the things a bit interesting because I, I had to dive on the code of the Archithread to understand what, what was running. And I entered in the libraries and found the lower half of the drivers. So here I could just understand how the driver itself interacts with the kernel code. 
because sometimes you need to perform some kind of adaptation uh, of your of the of the the lower half driver for your specific board without touching in the actual uh, upper half driver interface. And I just uh, make some some modifications on the clock source and using the high gas clock source available to reduce the noise of the motor and just updated the calculations for setting the PWM, which is which is here. So uh, just do some working on the PWM itself, and then I'm ready to go. So just go back to my application and check if the PWM is working. Okay, it's time to focus on the on the FOC. Uh, the FOC core itself, it's very simple. So I tried to use some kind of polymorphism in C uh, in order to make the FOC uh, low, lovely uh, couplet to the underlying RTOS and the device drivers. So uh, when you uh, initialize uh, a FOC, you need to you need to to, to initialize uh, access uh, instance, which is your actual uh, FOC driver, and you need to provide a uh, interface interface for inverter and a roller sensors. These two things you need to implement you need to implement by uh, by your OS. But uh, the implementation I did offers uh, some kind of interface. So. The interface that you pro that you uh, that you provide uh, needs to supply at least these two functions: the set voltage and get the DC link voltage in order to command the uh, the inverter. And for the roller sensor, you need to implement this API. So this is the methods of the uh, of the of the, of the object uh, of sensor and inverter. And this point is where the arch thread comes into play. The, in the implementation of the interface itself, I just created, I just put an uh, interface object in both inverter driver and my specific uh, arch thread sensor interface, and just added the platform specific uh, roller uh, fields. And, uh, and the question is, how to recover that when uh, I implement the interface? For example, on the drivers, when I implement the driver of the inverter, I receive the interface and by using the RT container off, it's something that the, it's some kind of magical macros that the, that only C language and C++ of course could provide to you. Um, makes you able to recover the instance of the specific fields of your driver, and based on that, I can access the PWM drivers and then supply uh, to the driver framework of Arch Thread uh, the calculated uh, three-phase voltage from my FOC algorithm to actual PWM outputs. The same is due, is did by the, uh, on the on the sensor interface. And here I just implemented a uh, estimator of the rotor positions, position sensor. And uh, I just added some kind of platform specific initialization. So by just opening the drivers from the arch thread, setting some my DC link voltage with, with its type to 12 volts, and my simulated encoder sensor, and some interface to create two new objects. So this is what you see there. I just, from the top level application, I have no platform specific code here, just the pointer for the interface. So I get the interface, I link to the access object, I do the aligned access, this one, uh, we will uh, move the, the motor in order to align the, the magnet flux IQ and the ID components in, in, in order to start the motor if I know value for that. This is a, a, a must step that we, will be done before to uh, move the motor. And after that, I just enter in the, in the fog control loop, just taking the current ticks, that's uh, of, uh, the kernel uptime, convert it to to second and float, uh, set the target the target voltage. As I, I said to you, it's always a two components. 
So the VD is zero is zero votes, and the VK will be one vote. So I can I will extract the maximum uh, the, the the velocity here with the maximum torque I can do uh, because I'm I'm telling to the FOC to run this and uh, the the with the IQ and ID ID uh, components uh, perfectly aligned into displaced by 90 degree. And then I just run the FOC and do a time step uh, which corresponds uh, to the to the to the to the tick rate that I'm aiming to run the FOC. The FOC run itself is very it's all it's 100% uh, independent of platform. So it just check some arguments. We'll check if the if the axis was aligned previously, uh, the velocity controller is disabled by default, but could be sure enabled. And it will do the basic things. So it will access using the interface, the, the rotor sensor driver, uh, get the counter revolution, and just see if I'm on the, oops, I'm initializing axis. Uh, ah, here is it. So, it will uh, capture and normalize the angle of the rotor, and will not use. We are not using. It will uh, invoke the the core function of the FOC that I presented on the slideshow for you, which calls the Clark and Park voltage and scales down the voltage. So, by passing the VQG and VQG one and VQG zero, which the V component, the static V components. I will end up with the three phase voltage, uh, which is biased, which is biased to the the DC link voltage you need to, to supply during the, the the setup, and this will just call the inverter interface and set the voltage directly on the eight bridge. I also enable the simulation of the roller sensor in order to have uh, a simulated encoder here. Okay. Uh, I said to you a lot of the code, so let's do this thing actually running. So I will build this thing. While that, let me open a terminal with my GIST app. Okay. Uh, let me see. Okay, so let me disable my video for some instance in order to show to you. So probably you see my webcam. So right now, uh, okay, so let's do some kind of focus here. I think I will need to do some processing here. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I get some. Let's see. Get some more. The problem is the. Fortunately, my video is very slow. So I think you can see my my motor running, but it's not the frame rate is not the best. Yeah, it's the power supply in the background. That's my uh, riding power supply. And this is the hardware that I have here. So I have a NRF uh, 52DK and uh, eight bridge here. And here is the motor being controlled itself. So I'm using the most uh, slow speed that I can have. So I have exactly one minute to review the demo and show the ramp to you. Let me see if I had able time for do that. So I prepared for the this is special for for the demo. So you are seeing my uh, VS Code. So I'm just building. And the best part, I att attached my J-Link. So it shall read, read my RTTRAD L file. So here is it. We have a proper debug section. And let me go to the webcam here. So here's the motor. It's doing some kind of axis alignment, as I said to you. So it will run. And then it's doing some kind of ramp. It's just uh, our increase and decrease the ramp. So it starts on clockwise and back to the counterclockwise from the maximum speed to the minimum. And repeats this every step uh, continuously uh, in order to. So here uh, I would like to show you. This is the actual waveform on one of the phase of the motors. So regarding uh, regardless of the PWM, when you filter out all the all the high frequency components, you will end up with a sine sine pure sine wave uh, waveform, which represents the phase voltage, the three phase voltage AC components directly on the shaft of the motor. Also here in my bench, I think it's. You are seeing the sinusoidal uh, uh, waveform, very little on the bottom, is the current waveform that's being consumed from my bench, which, which, which should match with the expected of the FOC algorithm to pro produce uh, near zero uh, current harmonics on your final system in order to stress uh the minimum you you can from your uh from your final hardware uh i can't just uh, resume this and also i cancel the the book section the code still running this is something very interesting it it it, uh, it does not reboot so it's, this is a uh, Feature that I, I find my, I found particular very nice, uh, and I think that's all uh, from the Archie thread. I, uh, let me go back to the the presentation. Uh, this is the uh, what I would like to show you uh, how to drop uh, an application side of the Archie thread. How to show you a real motor being spinning on the on the Archie thread and uh, provide some some sample code that you can that you can try uh, yourself you don't need to use the same hardware that i did you can use your own hardware there are the requirements of the minimum hardware in this in the in the samples in the in the sample documentation and i hope you to enjoy uh, with the with the art threads 
I'm always available on my GitHub to respond questions or do something related. Uh, so let me thank you all for watching this presentation. And if uh, someone has questions, so let's do on the chat or you can uh, ask me uh, right now. So thank you. Uh, let me. Yep, that fantastic no, presentation. And uh, yeah, I, I definitely uh, request, uh, if, if you don't mind, sticking around to uh, talk with the attendees in the chat. I think it'd be great if you could uh, answer questions there. Yeah. Um, we could take a look here, see too, if anyone's got a, any immediate ones. Uh, oh, I can see one right now. One, one, someone's asking, um, you know, is the is the code available? Is there a link maybe where they could download the code to duplicate what you've done? Yeah, yeah, the code is available. Uh, it's my, it's on my GitHub. Uh, I can drop the link you later on the chat. Uh, okay. uh, and uh, anyone can download. I just forgot to add uh, the licensing, but I will add a uh, supplement licensing on the code, which is Apache, the semi Apache licensing of the Archie thread in order to everyone can pick it and run it and uh, go something fantastic with that code. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we, we greatly appreciate that. So um, that'd be fantastic. And then I see there's, um, well, this wouldn't be a question for you, but I can answer this one. It's a, will the presentation recordings be available after the conference? Uh, I do believe these are all being recorded and that, um, you know, you'll be able to get access to that. So um, that was my understanding. So that's uh, something you'll be able to get access to. Um, looking through the chat here, I'm, I, I don't see any other ones jumping out. Um, but I'll, I'll let you uh, I'll let you go through and kind of chat with all the attendees. I know they'll really appreciate that. So it was a, a great talk. Yeah, and, uh, I, I, very interesting. Thank you, thank you. I will I will do my my, my part with the comments right now. <laughs> all right, perfect. Greatly appreciated again.